and good morning to everyone. We have gathered here this morning to celebrate the life of Sister Drant. And as we celebrate the life of Sister Drant, we know that she loves singing. So before we actually go into the full program, we are going to sing some of her favorite songs this morning. But before we do so, let us all kindly stand as we pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your goodness and for your mercy and for your grace that has brought us thus far. Into your hands we commit today's proceedings, we, we commit the service and any, everything that will be done and said. Let it be done to your name's honor and glory and take full control of everything today. In Jesus' name I pray thanksgiving. Amen. We start by singing 334. 434, please be seated, thank you, 434. We speak of the realms of the blessed.
understanding. In the sweet by and by, four to eight. built by God's own hand. We are nearing home.
Golden morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come. It is brought to the front. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his deeds. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. To all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will also hear 
their cry and will save them. The Lord keepeth all who loves him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. Psalms 145, 17 to 21. Today, we are gathered here to celebrate the life of our dear beloved sister in faith, Sister Durant, as we call her. I'm glad you have taken the time of your busy schedule to come and comfort and support the family in this time of bereavement. To those who are viewing online, I know you would have loved to be here, but the fact that you are logged on tells of your unwavering support to the family. I'd like to recognize this morning our president, pastor, government, government officials, all those who are in attendance this morning. We welcome you in a special way. I'll always remember driving through Pumpset and picking up Sister Durant on my way to church. She's always ahead, ahead of the family members in our passion of being at church on time. On her last testimony last year on her birthday, she sang praise to God, one of her favorite songs. And as we gathered at her bedside, Pastor Chang Nichols, our pastor, and, and I, just before her passing, a few days before her passing, she was able to utter the words of the beautiful hymn, There is sunshine in my soul today. On behalf of the pastor and members of the Kola SDA Church and SVG Mission at large, we again express our deepest condolences. We have been praying for you and we will continue to pray for you. Sister Durant will be dearly missed. May her soul rest in peace. Please find comfort in God's words to the family in Hebrews, where God said he will never leave you nor forsake you. In Matthew, he said, you, he shall, you shall be comforted. We pray that the love of God enfolds you during this time of grief. So welcome again, one, and welcome all. We will sing a congregational hymn, number 440, one of her favorite songs, How Cheering is the Christian Hope. It's in our song sheet. After which we'll have the invocation being done by one of our pastor, Pastor Domian Neverson.
bow your heads with me as we pray. Wonderful, amazing, loving Father. Today, O oh God, we come to you. Even at this time, O oh God, of pain. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit, who promises to comfort us, bring comfort, O oh God, to those who need comfort. Lord, we know, God, that we are just passing through. And from one time to another, Lord, we know that what will be great is when we can see you in glory. I pray, oh God, that you will keep all of us. Help us to be true. Help us to be faithful. And even in times of bereavement, even in times of pain and heartache, help us to look to you for all our strength. Bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Please be seated. We'll have... Our first scripture reading at this time will be read to us a grandson, Chavez Bob, and it's taken from John 14, verse 1 to 3, and verse 6. Good afternoon to everyone. Scripture reading this evening will be taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3 and 6. And it reads, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Here ends the scripture reading. Amen. We'll have special music at this time. We brought to us by Tarika Branch. Following, we'll have tribute by the family, and it will be done by Nicholas Joran. I'll name the rest after. Good morning, everyone. To the grieving family and friends, I hope you find comfort in the words of this song. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I have never, never been before. No sad. For time won't matter, won't matter anymore. Be you the land I am longing for you, and so. 
Amen. Amen. So as was mentioned before, the order of the tribute will come. Nicholas Don John, you have a poem. Then we have John De Silva, a video. Chateau Bob, a video. Charisse De Silva, a video. And then Sister Beulah. great grandma Ma. thank you for the gift of love now we are sharing it up above you had many things to say all in a caring way you always saw good in everyone no matter what they've done you were always the one we could all lean on even though it must have felt like a ton you are always the strength of the family. Now we must let you rest calm. We say goodbye as tears roll down our eyes. I know your place in heaven has a good view. You're telling God I need to keep an eye on a few. You will always be in our hearts and minds. So Grandma, Ma. I must go, but I'll never forget you're one of a kind. I love you, Ma. Good morning, and thank you, everyone, for being here today. As I pay tribute, to the life and to honor the memory of my mom. All my years growing up with her, I remember her as mommy. Then the grandkids came and called her Ma. So from then on, it was always Ma. Even the neighbors called her Ma. As a kid, she taught me to kneel at her bedside every night to say my prayers. As an adult, she prayed with me and for me. And she encouraged me to do so when troubles came or when in doubt. Man never tolerated any type of profanity or disobedience. She was hilarious and told us so many stories of her childhood. Some funny, some scary, but all of it very interesting. And you were no match against her at playing cards. She taught me the good basics of life that still ring true today. She took interest in the well-being of her grandkids and great-grandkids also by instilling in them the same things she taught me. She also taught me love, respect, forgiveness and charity while quoting scriptures such as do good to those who hate you and despitefully use you. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. And in her own words, don't fly in God's face. It was not until as an adult that I understood what that meant. I can still hear her voice throughout the day singing songs like, Trust and obey. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And Away beyond the blue, among other songs. Ma, your love has touched me for my lifetime and beyond. And I'm thankful that in this life I was loved by you. So, as tomorrow starts without you, I'll take comfort in the thought that I knew how much you loved me, as much as I love you. And as the tears come pouring down my face, I'll keep your love safe in my heart until we meet again on that resurrection morning. Goodbye, Ma. We loved you so, but Jesus loved you best.
Good morning to everyone who came out to celebrate the life of my grandmother, Ma. Whether online or there in person, I'm sure you can think of many wonderful things to say about Ma. Because she was just that, a wonderful person, always kind, brave. There's so many fond memories I have that I could speak about, many th things from my childhood. But my favorite was her ability to animate a story that took you right back to the moment. You felt like you were right there, walking down Lomans at four in the morning with a bucket of milk on her head. You could just imagine the scene based on her description. You know, she had all of these nuggets of wisdom. Like when Andrea and I would ask her why she held on to the hot pot without a towel when she was cooking, she would say, hell hotter, so always live your life trust in God. Even as an adult, I lived with Ma briefly. And when I would come home from work, she would say, Shati, come here. You eat yet? You want food? This was Ma, always giving, always caring. Always making sure that we ate. Sometimes she made sure we overate too. You know, she always made sure that we were well. If I think about my last interaction with Ma, I would hug her a little longer. Stay a little longer. I was in St. Vincent in 2020 before the pandemic began. And she was celebrating her birthday in church. I was so amazed that she took the mic, she went up and she sang. She was just so brave. Those are the qualities I will remember and cherish because those represent who she was. She lived through many hard times, including a world war, COVID, many deaths of family and friends. She had a difficult life growing up, but it didn't change Ma. Or maybe it made her who she was, the person who always trusted God, who smiled and laughed and was kind to every person in whatever way she could be. Those were the things I would cherish. Those are the things I keep most. Goodbye, Ma. I love you. And I'll miss you always. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sharice, and Ma was my grandma. This is my tribute to her. Grandmama, today we say goodbye to you. I know that you are gone, but you will always be with us. I have had so many fond memories of you. I remember my mom would take us to your house almost every weekend. We would cook and you always had an extra plate if someone popped up. We would talk about your stories as a young girl and you filled our hearts with love and laughter until we literally cried with joy. You were an absolutely amazing person to look up to always helping others without looking for a thank you in return. Thank you for never judging me when others did and always giving me great advice. I could only hope to be as kind as you were in my lifetime. For those of you who do, didn't know, I had the blessing of living with her during some of my teenage years and we always went on walks to pick many fruits, did word puzzles, she would take the left, I would take the right side page, played card games, knit doilies together, which I still have with me to this day. I would sometimes give her a clean pedicure, no nail polish of course, as she requested, because she deserved it. Even wash and curl her hair. These are things I will continue to tell my children and always and forever cherish. I would like to share a few other memories of my grandma. 
first was of her teaching me and my son the waltz. This was in New York City. She laughed at my two left feet, but it was a great, but she was a great teacher. She took the lead and guided me to a graceful waltz. Another was in church or anywhere she would see me. She always had a candy or those red and white mints for me. She would sneak it and whisper to me, go ahead, eat it fast, so others wouldn't see a sneak in a little bite before the service had ended. Little did Grandma know, her whispers were pretty loud, bless her heart, but it was the thought that counts, right? My sister Juliet, my cousin Tamara, and I were pretty close growing up. We used to have sleepovers at Grandma's house. She used to let Juliet and Tamara and myself play dress-up competitions with her hats and heels and dresses. She would be the judge. As we became older and living further apart, I'm thankful I always remained close to Grandma Ma. I loved our video chats where we would sing hymns and recap our memories of curling each other's hair among so many other things. One thing I know for certain is that I will miss her greatly. Our hearts ache as we lay to rest. Your pain is gone, but my memory of you will forever and always be in my heart. Until we meet again, goodbye for now, Grandmama. You will never be forgotten. I love you. forever and always. After Sister Summer tribute, we then will have the eulogy being done by granddaughter Patricia Hazelwood. Oh, daughter, sorry. Good morning to everyone. I'm very much delighted to give tribute to a sister, a mother, a counselor, a psychologist, and you name it. She was there because I can testify. Omi Durant, affectionately known to many as Ma. First, let me convey condolences on behalf of my family, so close, 
to the bereaved ones. To John, I know you are listening and watching. I just want to remind you that God is putting his sins to rest and Ma is one of his sins. Just hang in there, my sister. Be of good cheer. Just be faithful and you will meet her one day on the sea of glass. Now, I've known Sister Joran for many, many, many years. But if I may ask the question, who really is Sister Omi Durant? Or what can be said of her? Focusing on the words of Ernest Hemingway, I think I, it may help me to reflect back in the past. And I quote his words, everyone's life ends the same way. It's only the details of how they live and how they died that dis distinguish one from another. Because of these words, I'm able to look back in the past and focus on Sister Durant and see what her life really did mean to me. I realize she was very, she was a humble person. She humbles herself gracefully and embraces her children with love. She really did love her children. She was kind. She was gentle. She was very modest, respectful, and very courageous and outspoken. Say it as it is and still be your friend. There are so many memories or so many things that went down between myself and Sister Durant that I can talk about, but because of time, I won't. But one thing that stands out in my mind, and I always remember her for it, and I will always give thanks. In 1984, I was going through a dark, difficult, and depressing time of my life. So Sister Duran came by one day. And this was her. I quote her words as she said, said it to me. I left home to come by you. You did not tell me nothing, but I heard, don't tell me who I get it from because I will not tell you. Now, here with me telling your sister Samuel, I pause because if I, I have to pause to keep back certain feelings. So she said, here with me telling you now, sister Samuel, to get out of this thing, you have to put it to God and you have to find a way of pulling yourself to it, through it. You have to find someone you can trust and let it out. Don't be afraid. Talk, talk, talk it out or else you will get sick and your children will suffer. She held me. She held on to me. She hugged me. She sang a song and she prayed. Now, when she left that day, we chat other things because she, t she told me to talk, so I talk. <laughs> so after chatting, she gave me a hug. She sang a song and she prayed. Now, when she left me that day, after spending about two or more hours with me, I felt good. I felt so relieved. I felt light, and I said to myself, she said to talk, I really have to talk. So that's what I did. I start talking. I start letting out. 
and because of her advice to me, here I am today because of what she said. She was always there for me. She was very kind in what way she can. Again to her children, just hang in there. You have lost a mom, a grandmother, a great grandmother, but she was very good. When we met, every time we met, even as her days or life went down, she will say to me, come here, come. If people are wrong, she will talk easy, even in church. Everything all right? Everything all right? I will say yes. She will say, don't fool me enough, because I will know. That was the sister Duran. She was so concerned. May her soul rest in peace as she awaits the first trumpet song. She will arise. She will arise. She will arise. Amen. Our second scripture be taken from Revelation 21, verse 3 to 6. Being done being done being done by granddaughter Alexis John followed by special music by Noel John her son but before we do all this we'll have the eulogy being done by daughter Hazelwood Morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to try to get through this the best I can. Um, I know you've heard a lot about my mom, and um, it's going to be very difficult. I'm going to try. Good morning. I would like to take this time to thank all who visited, called, text, provided flowers and sent condolences during this most difficult time. Our family appreciates the love and support you showed in so many ways, and it does confirm how much our dear mother was loved. For those who don't know me, I am Patricia Hazelwood. I am Mrs. Durant's daughter. I'm honored to tell you about the life of our incredible mother, Omi. It is a life that should be celebrated and remembered as a life filled with love, generosity, and laughter. And I know you've heard that from most of the previous speakers. Our mother was born, Ermi Louise Durant, uh, sorry, Ermi Louise Brooker, on January 18, 1926, to Elfrida and William Brooker. She was the fourth of eight children, but she may as well have been the first sibling because she shared that she had a very close relationship with her brothers and used to fight for them when they were too afraid to fight off the bullies. Can you imagine a little five feet, five inch teenager standing up to bullies? Well, my mom did. She wasn't afraid of anything or anyone. Her brothers taught her how to even milk the cows, pitch marbles, and how to swim by pushing her off the dam in Camden Park. Now she said, I miss a rock, but I learned how to swim from that time on. This small giant was fondly known as Ma, Grandma, Grandmama, Tante Ermi, and Miss Gibson. She loved children and became a champion for injustice to children and assisted with the support of many others. She had a heart of gold and did what she could to help when and where needed. Unknown to her, she had a significant impact on so many lives 
including mine. There is an old saying that it takes a village to raise a child, which fits her appropriately because she not only raised her own village of seven children, but was instrumental in the upbringing and welfare of many of her nieces and nephews during the absence of their parents. Today we are celebrating the life of our village, a village where she opened her home to many other children who attended schools in Kingstown, but lived throughout the far Leeward and Windward areas because their parents could not afford the cost of transportation. On one occasion, her best friend, who was very sick, returned from England with two young children and entrusted her to care for them. It was a challenge she gladly and willingly accepted. On one occasion, while on her lunch break, she saw two small girls crying at a business place in Kingstown. She took the time to stop and inquire, why were these children there and why were they crying? She learned that their mother was unable to care for them and that they needed a home. Without hesitation, she offered to take both girls. But the business owner agreed to keep the elder child who was eight years old. Yes, our mother unofficially adopted the other child who was then five. Instantly, we had a sister added to our village. Ma was a jokester, as you've heard from, from the other siblings, that she loved to laugh and tell stories, which captivated anyone who will listen, especially her grandchildren. Even while she was sick in bed, she never lost the ability to make us laugh. I remembered making her some porridge, <laughs> unaware that she smelled it. <laughs> um, I knew what it was from the kitchen. She didn't hesitate to say, I smell it and I don't want it. <laughs> I pretended to taste it and say, mmm, mmm, it tastes so good, ma. She smiled and she looked at me and she said, will you not eat it? <laughs> we all laughed hysterically because it wasn't expected realizing that she still had that sense of humor throughout it all, even to the end. During the last few months, she read and meditated on Isaiah 46, 4. God promised her in his words, I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you, I, I will care for you, I will carry you along and save you. Now, Ma was raised in Camden Park and Lomans, but in 1974, she married the late Lawrence Durant and relocated to Calder. She became a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church where she attended until her recent illness. I understand that she truly, truly loved her church family and it is evident from your presence here and in her life. Mom is survived by six children, Eunice in England, Noel, Patricia, Alvin, Jacqueline, and Joanne in New York. 22 grandchildren, 47 great-grandchildren, 16 great-great-grandchildren, one sister, several nieces, nephews, and many friends. We are so proud to be a piece of her fabric, cut from her cloth, which we will continue to wear in her honor. We will miss you also, dear Lima, and will cherish your memories as long as we live. Sweet sleep, Ma, sweet sleep. I know I will miss her so much because when she is sick or there's something even minor wrong with my mother. I will take a flight to St. Vincent. 
I'm going to miss those moments. Until we meet again, Ma. Sweet sleep. Good morning, everyone. The second scripture reading is taken from Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 to 6. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Seem like I get the hardest part to do. Because I'm crying now, and this is my brother. So, just in case anyone didn't know, I'm singing a song I hope I make a mess of it. When time shall come for my living. And I shall bid you adieu Don't spend your money on flowers Just a rose will do I go to a beautiful garden At last where life work is true don't spend your money on flowers, just a rose will do. Just have an old-fashioned preacher, preacher someone so true. I need no beautiful flowers, just a rose will do. I don't need no organization, just to make it a do. I need no bright decoration, just a rose will do. I'll go to a beautiful garden, at last where life work is true. Don't spend your money on flowers, just a rose will do. Just a rose will do. Just a rose will do. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. As I stood, I almost said good afternoon, but something said, look at the clock. You know, and as I mentioned the word clock, it reminds me of Sister Duran. She's serious when it comes to time. She doesn't play if you give her a time. Please show up for that time. She's going to prepare everything. She's going to ensure that she's there waiting for you. You see, a service such as this is a service offered out of love and respect for the one who has departed. But it is also offered out of love and respect for the ones who are left behind. Much like God, death is not a respecter of persons. Death comes to saint and sinner, young and old, those high and those low. Death is a condition that this universe has to deal with. In fact, Job speaks of death as the place appointed for all the living. And the writer of Hebrews tells us that it is human destiny to die. And then, of course, we face the judgment. We see it every day. Not true, Dr. Duncan? We've experienced it before and we will experience it again. And we know these things, but when death comes, it still leaves us devastated. It still leaves us hurting. It still leaves us crying and sobbing. It still leaves us heartbroken. No matter how often we see it or experience it, we are really never prepared for it. So what can we say at such a time as this? Perhaps we can look to the word of God for guidance. David, the great king of Israel, knew his time to depart. The earth was near. He called his son Solomon and offered words of comfort and advice to the one who would be the next king. When Jesus knew that he would soon be leaving his disciples and returning to his father in heaven, he comforted them by speaking of mansions that he was going to prepare. And when the Apostle Paul knew that he would see the elders of the church at Ephesus no more, he offered them these words in Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. He said, now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace which can build you up. And give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. This morning I'm extremely honored to be asked to speak up for Ma. And I hope that I will say something that will be not just comforting, but strengthening. That will be uplifting to those of you who are hurting in the days ahead. As you adjust to life now without your mother grandmother, friend, and confidant. Let's consider the topic, God never sees his children die. He simply sees them coming home. It is said that when one of his church members was dying, John Watson, a Scottish preacher, would kneel down and whisper in the person's ear, in my father's house are many rooms. Then with a contented sigh, the person would slip away entirely unafraid. There is something about the great, this great portion of scripture with, which not only consoles us, but gives us the encouragement that we need. If we could see only for a moment how glorious Sister Duran's homecoming was, 
No one here would call her back to the limits of her aged body. Angels were there ushering her that, to that sleep in Christ. Her Savior was there reassuring her that he is still the resurrection and life. Even though Sister Durant will be missed, there is something very appropriate about her departure. Even as the author of Ecclesiastes indicated, there is a time to be born and a time to die. It is appropriate because she lived out a full, complete, and enjoyable life. She had accepted and known the love of God and her family. Her house was in order. She was ready to die. She was a Christian. And oh, she truly loved God. One person said, There is nothing more certain than death and nothing more unsure than life. Life in these bodies and life on this earth is temporal. Temporal simply because of sin. The Bible refers to our bodies as tents. And for a little while, a tent can be a wonderful home. When a hiker is in the mountains, enjoying the wonderful outdoors of nature, a tent can be exactly what he needs when he becomes weary and is in need of a place to rest and be refreshed. While tents are wonderful for their intended purpose, a person doesn't expect to live in a tent forever. Before long, a person longs to go home and live in a house, a structure that is more secure, a structure that is more permanent, a, a structure that is more sturdier than a tent. I'm sure you would recall the tent that, the scripture, not the tent, <laughs> that we just, just heard, in which Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. In my father's house are many mansions or dwelling places. I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be also. Tents are good for a purpose and are helpful for a season, but they can wear out. The fabric can become weak and torn and the poles can collapse. The Apostle Paul, the earthly tent maker and repairer, speaking of the confidence possessed by the believer, said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 and 6 through 8, Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, the apostle says, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Probably no one gives us a clearer picture of what that scripture was really saying or of what death in this sense means to a mature Christian than what I would have heard of John Quincy Adams. You see, when he was turning four score years, he was hobbling down the street one day, leaning heavily on a cane. Suddenly a friend slapped him on his shoulder and said, well... How is John Quincy Adams this morning? The old man turned slowly and smiled and said, Fine, sir, fine. But this old tenement that John Quincy lives in is not so good. The underpinning is about to fall away. The thatch is all gone off the roof and the windows are so dim that John Quincy can hardly see out anymore. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't surprise me if before winter 
is over that he had to move out. But as for John Quincy Adams, he was never better. Never better. With this, he started hobbling down the street, believing without a shadow of a doubt that the real John Quincy Adams was not a body that you could enclose in a casket or bury in a grave. He recognized that beyond the temporary physical man on the outside, there is a spiritual and eternal one on the inside. He understood that the flesh dies and is buried, but the spirit lives on. When Jesus comes again, somebody, what a day it will be because he says that the mortal shall put on immortality. He shall resurrect us to a newness in life. Giving us an opportunity to be clothed, clothed in righteousness. Our bodies will never fade. It will not die. It will not experience the things that we now experience. When someone we love passes on, there is naturally an element of sorrow. When you've been around someone for many years or for however long you've been alive, that person can become an important part of your life. And you miss them when they're gone. But today, beyond our natural sorrow, I want to let us know that there is a supernatural joy, hallelujah, a joy that comes from knowing the reality of Jesus, the, the reality of God's love, the, the reality of forgiveness, the, the reality of a new birth, the, the reality of heaven, the reality of eternity, the reality of a future reunion. Of a truth weeping may endure for the night. Our human emotion sometimes it needs that release. But it didn't stop there. It says, for joy comes in the morning. What a day it will be when we can express ourselves in that joyous way. Hugging and kissing those who have gone to sleep before us. I'm so thankful that God would not leave us in this uh, situation. Stranded in our hopeless situation. Uh, strangled by the cords of death. So God... Decided that he would send his own son, Jesus Christ, into the world to be our substitute and our covering and our shelter. Jesus came on a search and rescue mission. And I'm so thankful that he was successful. He took our sins on, on, on his sinless shoulders and carried them to the cross. There he died. There he shed his sacred blood. On our behalf for our salvation. It is finished, Jesus cried. It is finished, it is done. Sins forgiven, covered and paid for all of them. And with sins forgiven, death is defeated. Death is destroyed. But Jesus' resurrection... And what we call Easter morning shows that this is so mission accomplished. After Good Friday and a good Sabbath's rest, then Jesus is going away not in defeat but in victory. The victorious son will return to his father. He ascends to heaven there to prepare a place for us. He prepares a place for my and for you and for all those who trust. In him. And what a place it will be. The holy city, the new Jerusalem. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be 
with them as their God, and he will wipe away every tear from their eye, and death shall be no more, neither shall they be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Oh, we can sing, we can shout, we can celebrate, because we know that this existence that we are experiencing is not something that will continue to go on perpetually, but it would come to an end uh, when Jesus returns and comforts us, when Jesus returns and removes that that sting of death and buries it itself. So this is what is in store for us, my friends. We're called to take shelter, to take cover, to get in the tent in Christ. Jesus is our way to that place of what some might say is an utopia. There is no other way. As Jesus told his disciples, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way to safety. Nothing else will forgive our sins. Nothing else will rescue us from death. Not all our works are relative goodness. Not all our wisdom or our high education. The only thing that can save us, the only thing that can rescue us is Jesus. He is the only way. But he is the only one we need also. It's not anything we do. It's what he has done for us. Oh, we are encouraged this morning. And if Mark could speak, she would encourage you. Trust in him and you will be saved. Saved to eternal life. Trust in him and you will get an opportunity for a great family reunion. Trust in him. Let not your hearts be troubled. For there is a place that Jesus is preparing. And again he says, let not your heart be troubled, for there is a place I'm giving you. Listen again, brothers and sisters, to those words of Jesus. He says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So we have come to the end of a journey. And we can see that it is indeed a good day. An earthly journey has ended. A heavenly residence has been established. But some questions still linger. What is our hope? What is our confidence? What is our expectation? Oh, I comfort you with the words of the apostle in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 onwards, where he says, Now I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither that corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, he says, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. Uh, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and uh, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written a saying that we all want to say even right now death is swallowed up in victory oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which give us Give it us the victory through Christ Jesus. To God be the glory. May we live a life that would make us worthy of seeing Ma again on that great getting up morning. May we live a life that 
would make us worthy of joining and hugging and kissing our sweet Jesus and thanking him for what he has done for us. Oh, brothers and sisters, I can't wait to be there. I can't wait to enjoy everything that he has left to prepare for me. What about you? My prayer today is that as Sister Durant would have lived her life, as she would have made her call in an election sure, that every one of us individually, because salvation is a personal commitment, I can't make it for you, you can't make it for me. My prayer is that we make it before it's too late. May she rest in peace. Amen. We're going to invite the family to stand at this moment as we have the prayer of comfort being done to us by our president, Pastor Batiste. So a musician to play very softly for us. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. I bring you greetings and uh, condolence on behalf of the SVG mission of Seventh-day Adventists. That is the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And the record shows that Sister Durant was a very faithful, dedicated, and committed member of this church for almost half of a century. That's almost 50 years. She has been a loving matriarch, not only to the members of the church, but to the community and to her extended family. And we rest assured that she fell asleep in Jesus, awaiting the time of the resurrection when she will be called forth to be with the Lord in glory. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you at this midday hour. To give you praise and thanks for life, for the blessings of life. For whether it be in life or in death, we all belong to you. We are children of the heavenly king. We come to you at this time on the behalf of the deceased and the grieving family that she has left behind. Oh God, we give you praise and thanks for the 96 years of life and living that you have granted unto her well beyond the three score and ten, the average lifespan of mankind. And it is not because of who she was or what she would have done that her life has been prolonged. But it's simply because of your goodness, your mercy, your love and your compassion to her. 
We thank you, Lord, for her offsprings, her children, grandchildren, great grand, in laws, siblings, the entire family, the village as it was described, that of being so loving all in grace and committed to each other. We know, Lord, that there is going to be pain, anguish, regret, grief, sorrow by those who are left behind. But we are thankful, Lord, for the legacy of her enduring faith Many years ago, she stepped out from the world and stepped into your loving embrace, committing her life fully and completely into your care and keeping. From then on, it would have been a never-ending relationship with you as in her own personal way she would have had sweet and abiding communion with you. And not only that, she would have left her footprints along the journey of life. She would have taught her children and grandchildren about the God that, that she adored, the God that she loved, the God that she enjoyed having a relationship and intimacy with, with, with we pray Heavenly Father that those who are left behind will emulate her vision her passion her mission her godly life her example and may they pass on the same values, principles, and virtues that they saw evident in their mom and grandmother to their own offspring and children, the unborn generation yet to come. We are thankful, Lord, for the influence that she would have had in this church. We have heard about her punctuality. She would have helped to shape the culture of this church and to fashion its outreach ministry. We believe, Lord, that there are many who have been touched by her selflessness, her devotion, her loyalty, her patience, her integrity. We pray, Lord, uh, that lives will never be the same again because they would have met this Christian example along the journey of life. So we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to give us our faith in you Notwithstanding the circumstances and tri the trials, the besetments all around us, may you help us daily to lift up our eyes onto the hill from whence cometh our help. For our help cometh from the Lord that make heaven and earth. And if perchance there is someone here today who does not know what it means to have a personal encounter and relationship with you. I pray, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit will impress upon their minds the need to reach out and touch the hem of your garment and receive that infusion of faith which will generate a new life, a new birth in their experience. So bless us again as we commit our lives into your care. Teach us to number our own days, our own humanity, our own frailty, 
so that we can apply our hearts and the wisdom. And when the role is called up yonder, may we, having lived lives right and pleasing in your sight, be able to meet with Sister Joan, who has now gone on before, where we can enjoy the ceaseless ages of eternity with you. This is our humble prayer and ask him in Jesus' worthy and precious name. Amen. How sweet are the tidings that greet the pilgrim year. I, before I cl uh, sung, I would let to, like to let you know that Ma, as affectionately known to us, not only a member of our church, but a very, very, very close friend. I will miss her very dearly, especially when my niece was alive. She used to go and help her. She was in the 90s, and my niece was in the 60s. And yet she was the one who was attending to her. That's how I tell you how, how strong she was until lately. Let us all stand as we sing this song. How sweet are the tidings that greet the pilgrim year as he wanders in exile from home.
Let us all bow our heads as we pray. Oh, gracious and eternal Father, we are so thankful for the life of Sister Duran, better known to us as Ma. Lord, she has lived a long life, and for that we give her thanks and praise. As we are about to leave this place to go to the place of internment, take us safely, dear Father, and as God we lay her to rest, may you send your holy angels to mark this spot so that on that great resurrection morning, all of us will be able to see Sister Durant again. If those of us who are alive must be faithful if we want to experience that. So bless us and take us safely. These mercies are acts with thanksgiving in Jesus' wonderful and precious name. Please remain seated as the casket is being...